The Supreme Court has just denied a stay that would have protected a state's Second Amendment sanctuary law. This law bars state agents from enforcing federal laws which violate the Second Amendment. However, the Supreme Court just denied that law protections. This is a really interesting case, a really interesting order, and there is a lot more than meets the eye with this order. So let's talk about what's going on. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think more federal laws which violate the Second Amendment need to be struck down, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. So like I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we're gonna be talking about an order that was just issued by the Supreme Court. That order denied a stay which would have protected Missouri's Second Amendment Preservation Act. In 2021, Missouri passed a law, which was the Second Amendment Preservation Act. That law set the state's interpretation of the Second Amendment and set restrictions on the enforcement of inconsistent federal laws. The law in Missouri prohibits the officers of the state, its agents, its government officials, from helping federal agents and other individuals who are attempting to enforce inconsistent federal laws. The law also created a civil remedy where anyone, any citizen of the state of Missouri could sue Missouri officials if they helped to enforce the federal laws which violate the Second Amendment. In response to this, the state uh, you know, was sued by the United States government and the United States government wanted to stop this law from being enforced. In this case, the US government sued Missouri under the theory that the law is unconstitutional because the statute is premised on what they believe is an incorrect interpretation of the Second Amendment. Essentially, the U.S. government argued that Missouri's super pro to a law that they put in place is unconstitutional, and the government's more limited interpretation of the Second Amendment is in fact correct. The district court on review agreed and struck down the law in its entirety, and the district court issued an injunction which prevented the state of Missouri from enforcing the law. Now, what is the law in question here? Well, Missouri passed the Second Amendment Preservation Act through an act called HB 85. The act declares that federal supremacy does not apply to federal laws that restrict or prohibit the manufacture, ownership, and use of firearms, firearms accessories, or ammunition within the state because such laws exceed the scope of federal government's authority. Under this act, no public officer or state or local employee has the authority to enforce firearms laws declared invalid by the act. Any public officer or state or local employee who tries to enforce the firearms laws, which are declared invalid and a violation of the Second Amendment, you know, can be sued by a Missouri state citizen and they can bring a lawsuit against that officer or agent. And there could be civil penalties of at least $50,000 per employee, which is hired by that law enforcement agency or whatever government agency is being sued. Essentially, this law allows any person within the state of Missouri to sue a state agent or employee who tries to enforce a federal law that infringes on the right to keep and bear arms. This Missouri law that was put in place essentially plays off of the Texas abortion law in the recent Supreme Court decision in Whole Woman's Health. If you aren't aware, the Texas abortion law or SB8 prohibits an abortion if a fetal heartbeat is present. This law is different from other laws because it's not enforced by the state of Texas or any of its executives, but rather it allows any individual to sue any other individual who performs or knowingly aids and abets in that activity. This means that the enforcement mechanism is not the state of Texas or its officers or agents. Instead, any person who wants to sue to stop that conduct can bring the lawsuit. So really the enforcement is from the people, not the government. The enforcement mechanism of the law was designed in a way to make it harder, if not impossible, to bring a lawsuit and get the law struck down. This is because courts don't actually strike down laws. What they do is they place injunctions against the enforcement of the law. So for example, a court can enjoin the state of Missouri and its attorney general maybe from enforcing the law and the result of that injunction is essentially a nullification of the law, at least the enforcement of the law by that attorney general. So if the state is barred from enforcing the law, that would mean maybe that the law has no effect. With the SB8 scheme, however, you can't get an umbrella injunction against the state or an attorney general since they aren't actually the ones enforcing the law. Instead, you have to get an injunction against every single individual citizen who is suing you, but then someone else could potentially pop up, sue you again. So you would have one lawsuit pop up, you would get an injunction. Well, then another lawsuit pops up, you get an injunction. Then another lawsuit pops up, you get another injunction. And you can see how this goes on and on because the power of enforcement is in the citizens. Now this SBA issue made its way up to the Supreme Court and there was a decision in a case called the Whole Women's Health versus Jackson case. And despite what you hear, the issue in that case did not involve the constitutionality of abortion, but instead the issue was really the lawsuit scheme and this whole law scheme with SB8. 
The SB8 case really dealt with a prior Supreme Court case called Ex Parte Young. Ex Parte Young deals generally with the 11th Amendment, which says that private citizens cannot sue the state or other officials because they have sovereign immunity. However, a citizen can sue a state or its officials if they are violating civil rights. These are known as Section 1983 lawsuits. Under Ex Parte Young, if an executive branch official is violating your constitutional rights or is threatening to, then you can seek a prospective injunction against them, i.e. a pre-enforcement challenge. The Supreme Court found that since SB8 is not enforced by the state or its agents, then you cannot seek an injunction against them. You also couldn't even get an injunction against the judges who maybe hear these cases, who are hearing these lawsuits, or even the clerks that are involved. Instead, you would have to get an injunction against each and every citizen that files a lawsuit under that structure. So that is the backdrop that essentially Missouri used in the Second Amendment Preservation Act. And they pretty much just copied that and then applied it to firearms. The state removed themselves from enforcing the law and instead gave these citizens the power to sue state officers and agents who are enforcing these types of anti-gun laws. Think of this as the state of Missouri saying, we believe in the Second Amendment. We are passing a super pro to a law. We aren't going to be the ones enforcing it. Instead, we're giving the power to the citizens to enforce it. And if we ourselves, the state or any of our officers or agents violate it, then these citizens can sue us. The district court on review struck down the entire Missouri law and enjoined the state of Missouri and its officers and its agents from enforcing it. But again, here's the issue. None of them are enforcing it anyways. Like I mentioned, the power is in the people. Missouri then appealed that decision and they went up to the Eighth Circuit and they also asked for a stay of that decision. However, the Eighth Circuit did deny that stay. And then that led to Missouri filing an emergency application up to Supreme Court and they wanted the Supreme Court to grant a stay. And we got an order from the Supreme Court which actually denied the stay. Now I'm going to read you the order and then we're going to talk about maybe what's going on. The order of the Supreme Court states that the application for stay presented to Justice Kavanaugh and by him referred to the court is denied. Justice Thomas would grant the application for stay. But then we got a statement in the order from two other justices, Justice Gorsuch and then also Alito. It says that statement of Justice Gorsuch with whom Justice Alito joins respecting the denial of the application for stay. And this is what they said. With the understanding that the district court prohibited only implementation and enforcement of HB 85 by the state of Missouri and its officers, agents, and employees, and any other in active concert with such individuals. I agree with the denial of the application for a stay under the present circumstances. An injunction purporting to bind private parties, not before the district court, or the challenge provisions themselves, however, would be inconsistent with the equitable powers of federal courts. Then they cite to whole women's health. Now, I will say, ideally, in my eyes, I think the Supreme Court should have granted the stay. It would have been cleaner. I agree with Justice Thomas that they should have granted the stay. However, I would say this is not actually catastrophic that maybe some people believe. First, the Supreme Court is not deciding on the merits of the law. And the typical response of the Supreme Court, especially when there's an appeal like in the Eighth Circuit currently going on, is that they want to be hands off and they're going to let the lower court make their way through the process. But more importantly, what Justice Alito and Gorsuch just said in that order is essentially that the district court's injunction only applies to the state and also its agents. That's all the district court could enjoin. They could only enjoin those officers and the agents of the state. It does not prevent private individuals from suing and also trying to enforce the law. And like I broke down prior in this video, that is the whole purpose of this law. So essentially, the Supreme Court denied the stay and the state is enjoined but that doesn't actually stop this law from making its way through the process and it doesn't stop the law from actually still being enforced. If a police officer or a state official tries to enforce a you know, law that violates the Second Amendment, a private party can still sue them and seek those civil remedies. Personally, I still would have preferred Justice Thomas and his approach to just grant the stay, but in my eyes, this case is still very much up in the air and it's going to be very important and it's going to be a critical case to see how the Eighth Circuit deals with this. But also Justice Gorsuch and Justice Alito in that order just sent a very clear signal that this type of pro to a law and this type of legal structure and these types of cases maybe in some way is in fact consistent with whole women's health with that decision and these types of powers being given to the citizens to sue the government is potentially still proper. So I know this is a complicated case, complicated topic, but I needed to cover it because I've seen some stuff kind of stirring around on the internet. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video, and you would like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm, and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos, 
and in this type of two-way news. Also want to mention just to double check your subscription. A lot of people comment almost every single day that they've been unsubscribed from the channel. And then also I was looking at my analytics and about 60% of all viewers are not subscribed to the channel. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel and also make sure if you're subscribed, have all notifications on because that ensures you actually get these videos. But as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and never forget this nation was built by Arm Scholars and this nation will be maintained by Arm Scholars.